Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 6 of What If Naruto Was Sent to the Past by the Shinigami. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 7 of it, comment down below and let me know. The like goal for this video is 250 likes. So like this video to let me know that you're interested in this series and you want the next part. Then go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. I've got a bad feeling about this, Tabane. That thought was echoed only by the hammering of Kashina's own heart, as Naruto led the three of them into the training grounds, the organ all but leaping into her throat with each step she took. What was this bell test of which she spoke? What did it have to do with teamwork? She dissected his words countless times, pulling them apart, and tugging them back together, to ascertain whatever hidden meaning they might entail, but to no avail. She just couldn't figure it out. Now, Kashina wasn't stupid. She might be a bit of a tomboy at times, but she prided herself on being the smartest in her class. She knew Naruto had dragged them out here for a reason, just as there had to be some explanation for the lone bell tied at his waist. What purpose did it serve? The last Uzumaki was almost certain she'd find out in the next few minutes. Naruto wasn't malevolent, whatever he was plotting, it had to be for their own good. She trusted him implicitly. After all he'd gone through to keep her safe, there was no way he'd harm her right. Alright, then. Even so, her heart skipped a beat as he bade each take a seat, and then did so himself. She'd never be able to tell behind the impassive facade he wore, but Naruto was actually enjoying this. His eyes crinkled ever so slightly as he placed a hand on his chin and leaned forward, contemplating them as though they were mere pieces of meat, not potential Genin for whom he was responsible. He deliberately eyes them over, seeing them squirm reminded him so much of himself when he was younger. Kakashi-sensei had honestly scared him a little when they'd first met. Ah, the bell test. Yomi drawled, popping up on his shoulder in a faint plume of smoke. Damn it's just so nostalgic, you know, and you only brought one bell. You're really gonna make the kids sweat, hot partner. Indeed, Naruto had no intention of going easy on these three. Shinobi who broke the rules were scum. Shinobi who abandoned their friends were worse than scum. If they were the former, willing to break any rule and work together, he'd accept them with open arms. If they abandoned one another and each strove to claim the bell for his or herself, then he wouldn't take them as his students. Ah, now he could really see what Kakashi had been thinking with this little test. No wonder he'd never taught any known before. Introductions. Time to see if these scummy students like him, or not. Ha. The trio blinked, baffled by this weird word. Dark eyes surveyed them. I said, introductions. Introduce yourselves. Make it snappy now. You, with the silver hair. His gaze slid to Ibiki. You first. Likes, dislikes. That sort of thing. My name is Ibiki Marino. The boy replied, his voice surprisingly soft for the man who would one day become the bane of the least worst enemies. But there was a cold fire in his eyes, one that warned against taking this youth lightly. I love Konoha. I hate her enemies. My dream. Is to join the torture and interrogation unit and weed out all threats against the village, like my father before me. Quite the little sadist, ain't he? At least now we know where he gets it from. Some things never change, I suppose. Hi hi, that's a noble goal. You'll go far with an attitude like that. The faintest of smiles touched the youth's face. Thank you, sensei. We'll see about that. Next. Naruto willed himself to remain dispassionate as his gaze turned to Nawaki. What's your story, kid? He knew very little about the boy beyond the fact that he died young. Sanade had spoken about him once when he'd asked yet the pain in her hazel eyes had prevented him from prying too deeply. Now was his chance to learn more about her elusive sibling, and quite possibly, save his life down the road. I'm Senju Nawaki, he enthused brightly, adjusting his headband with a hand. I like my sister, I hate vegetables, and my dream is to become Hukage, just like my grandfather, Hashirama. Anywhere else, and Naruto would have praised the boy for his dream. But this was war, and in war, fools often fell first. Naivety would only get the boy killed faster. He didn't like it, but sometimes you had to bring out the whip. He could hope that it would sink into the boy someday. Assuming he lived that long. Anyway, time for the rod. You're going to be Hokage, the Chiha immediately scoffed, effortlessly dipping back into that arrogant persona he wore so well in the presence of his adversaries. And pray tell, what makes you think you can reach that level? By riding on the coattails of your grandfather. There are dozens of shinobi more qualified to let than you and they've earned their strength. I'll bet my ridiculous pension, that you don't have a single jutsu to your name outside those taught in the academy. I do so. Nuwaki shrieked, bolting to his feet. As a matter of fact, just yesterday I... Nuwaki. Ibiki murmured, the quiet steel in his words causing the other boy to flinch. A shinobi does not give away his secrets unnecessarily. What the hell, man? Ibiki is right. Naruto grunted, a rare frown wiping away his trademark grin. As a shinobi, we must maintain calm and detached when facing an enemy. Allowing someone to rile you only ensures your own demise. 
I'll expect better from you in the future. But you're not my enemy. That's not the point. Jeez I can't believe my sister likes you. Naruto nearly choked on his own spit. Tsunade I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Refusing to react in even the slightest manner, he turned his attention to the last but certainly not least and sole female of his squad. And now we come to you Kashina. Despite the misconceptions formed by the two boys, Kashina squeaked when Naruto's gazes fell upon her. For once in her young life her feelings were more of a crutch than an actual strength, she simply couldn't bear the thought of Likudin and being cut down like Nawaki had. Despite his promise to be stern, Naruto couldn't help but take pity on her. Take your time, he soothed. It's just a simple question. Ah. Alright. At his words, a touch of color returned to her pale visage, alongside a touch of her old bluster. My name's Uzumaki Kashina. I like Orange, Mikoto-chan and Raymon, especially the kind they serve back at Ichirakus. My first dream is to become the first female Hokage, so everyone will respect me. She was grinning now, all her of her fears forgotten as she poured out her life's goals. Then start a B.E.G family. And my second dream is, 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 is. Naruto prodded gently. Her eyes flickered to him and her face flared brighter than her hair. She daren't continue. That's a secret, Tebane. Ha. Her teammate males tilted their heads aside, wondering what had just come over her. Naruto sighed. Poor girl. She really was taking this hard. She looked so serious that he felt a sudden impulse to reach over, sweep his fingers through her hair, and tell her that everything was going to be okay. Feeling his gaze on her, she turned and caught his eye. The two of them shared a slight smile then, and for a moment they weren't master and student, just two shinobi. Allies. Friends. Perhaps even. Boy, sensei. The waki frowned, shattering the moment. How come you're being so nice to Kashina? Naruto's gaze snapped to him, sharring and flaring. This girl has suffered through more in her short life than you can ever hope to understand. More importantly, she is your teammate. You will show her the respect she deserves. Do we have an understanding? His color intent could have flattened Gamabunta. Hi, but I'll become Hokage first. Wham. His head struck the ground in record time, evidently Kashina wasn't above bopping an ally when she got pissed. Like hell you will, Tebane. It'll be me who becomes the next Hokage. No, it'll be me. Me? The Redeed instantly accepts his challenge, jolting to her feet and glaring bloody red daggers at him. With the Kyubi inside her, it wasn't far off. Me, you stupid habanero. Nuwaki spat back. I'll be the one to lead the village. Me. 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 Kashina's subsequent shout nearly deafened the entire village, putting a swift end to that argument, and left everyone's ears ringing. Idiots. Ibiki muttered. Hi hi kitties, let's settle down. Naruto cajoled, pushing them back into their seats. Neither of you will become Hokage if you don't pass this test. That got their attention. What? Naruto's eyes curled into a smile the act eerily similar to one of Kakashi's infamous eye grins. Damn but it felt good to be the sensei this time around. Here's your first mission. He began jovially, hoisting up the trinket he procured for just this very occasion. You three have exactly six hours to get the spell from me. Whoever does, becomes my student. Those who fail, will be stripped of their hishiate and sent back to the academy forthwith. Part of him longed to laugh when he saw their Shen faces, but he held himself together. What kind of test is that? Nuwaki demanded, aghast. I'm a very busy man. Naruto replied, lying as effortlessly as one would draw breath. I only have time to train one of you. But the third said. I don't care what that old monkey said. I was told I would have a team. Whether that team exists of me and one or none is entirely up to you. That's no fair. We're not fresh getting, you know. I've had this satiate for nearly a year now. With the three, friend war raging on, you might as well be. Naruto replied, the scorn in his voice very real at Nawaki's outburst. I'm not taking any of you anywhere, unless I know you have the skills to stack up against Ame Shinobi on their home turf. Frankly, I'm not ever certain what the Sandarume is thinking. Maybe the old coot's finally gone senile or something. He gave a half-hearted shrug, uncaring for their disbelief at his subtle defiance. You'll be going on an A-rank mission. This, this is an S-class. Satisfy my expectations and you won't have anything to worry about. Questions. Problems. Concerns. If you have any of those feel free to turn around and go home. Unsurprisingly, there weren't any more outbursts after that. Still smiling, he continued. To even the odds I wouldn't be using my Sharingan or Shadow Clones. But that's the only concession I'll make. Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, and Taijutsu, everything else will be fair game. I'll even accept seals, if any of you know of them. Kashina, I'll also allow you to use that, if you can control it. Remember, there's three of you, and only one of me, come at me with intent to kill, and someone just might get a bell. When do we start? Now? Naruto grinned and placed a thumb into his mouth, biting down hard on the digit. Kashina was already throwing herself forward in an attempt to stop his palm from touching the ground, recognizing it at once as a summoning jutsu. 
She thought she caught a flash of approval in her sensei's eyes, then he was all but was gone in a plume of smoke. The kunai struck something sharp and unyielding, a split second before she found her arm locked in an inescapable vice. For all her strength she found herself powerless, unable to move her trapped limb even an inch. What is this? The large red scorpion unfolded itself before the baffled Kanoichi, its crimson carapace glinting dully in the afternoon light. Her arm lay trapped in one of its pincers. Any other Kanoichi would have coiled at the sight of that bug being so close to them, but not Kashina. Though the creature was easily twice her size and thrice as heavy, she didn't falter. Not even a little bit. That is, until it spoke. You called, Naruto-sama, a distinctly feminine voice issued from its mouth parts. Sorry, the Nikazei-chan. Naruto apologized, but would you mind playing with her for a bit? Not at all. The insect hissed, drawing the girl closer. You promised me some amusement last night, but I didn't think it would be so soon. Boy. Kashina yelled, not liking the look in those eyes, not one bit. Let me go, Tebane. I said. Sir you no know jutsu. Water dragon jutsu. A mighty deluge of draconic water battered Benikaze from the side, and suddenly Kashina's arm was wrenched free, allowing her to whirl away. She caught sight of Ibiki out of the corner of her eye, the silver-haired lad heaving a deep breath as he felt the side effects of chakra drain. So focused was she on her teammate, that she missed Naruto's slight smile. That's the way. Thanks. She gasped out, sopping wet, but in one piece thanks to his efforts. It's nothing. Her teammate replied, readying himself as Benikaze turned towards him. I hope you have a plan though, because I won't be able to do that again for a while. Oh ho ho, the scorpion tittered softly, shaking herself dry with a shiver. There a little fight in you, boy. I like that. Perhaps I'll play with you instead. Don't forget about me. Benikaze didn't even bother to turn, she simply swatted Nawaki out of the air with her tail, arresting his aerial assault before it could even truly begin, knocking the breath from his very lungs. The boy cried out as the sheer power flung him into the lake at the edge of the training field, where he promptly sank like a stone. He did not emerge from those watery depths. Unworthy. She snorted, refusing to even look at where he was still sinking. Shinobi do not advertise their presence. You would have had a better chance, if you remained silent. Ouch. Naruto permitted himself the smallest of cringes as a few bubbles trickled to the surface. I forgot how powerful scorpions are ma, at least she didn't sting him. Nawaki. For the first time since the exercise had begun, distress crossed Ibiki's visage. Hold on. I'll. Benikaze was suddenly there, blocking him with her pincers. Did you forget about me? Both boy and bug spun away in a biz of waltz, pincers and kunai, striking in fast and furious tandem, neither able to land so much as a telling blow on the other. Kashina was suddenly left alone with her sensei, one teammate fighting for his life against a killer scorpion, the other drowning in the bottom of a lake. Naruto turned to face her, and she quelled inside at the look in his eye, suddenly aware just how truly beyond her he really was. It was like comparing a green genin to a kage. Of course the monkey would get slaughtered. But Kashina was nothing if not stubborn, and she wasn't about to let the chance slip by. I will get that bell from you. She swore, stealing herself. Foolish girl. The Kyuubi's voice berated her from beyond the seal. You clearly don't understand the purpose of this exercise. Shut up. She refused to listen to the fox, too often had it tried to trick her in the past. It would stay right where it was, in the seal. I invite you to try. Naruto beckoned, crooking his fingers at her. Come. She did, lunging at him with all her might. Stronger than her, though he surely was B, she had a few surprises in store for him for him. The month they'd been apart had not been wasted. She'd more than a few tricks up her sleeve now, tricks she planned to utilize to devastating effect. You asked for it, Tebane. Come on now, a frontal assault. He deep hand as she hurtled toward him, intent on clobbering the daylights out that smug smile. You know that won't work. Imagine his surprise when her speed suddenly tripled, her beautiful body Kami, stop thinking like that, vanishing in a sudden swirl of dust. Naruto blinked in bemusement, true to his word, he hadn't activated either of his eyes, so what came next was completely unexpected. The first punch came at Naruto sideways, spinning his upper body around with the force of the impact, and driving him back a half step before he fully recovered his equilibrium. Somewhere under his feet, the earth seemed to shiver and quake, threatening to give way. He spat out a tooth and wiped away the blood. It regrew almost instantly ah, the benefits of Kyuubi's chakra but, that did nothing to check his own amusement at being clobbered by the redeed. Ho? He blinked, thumbing a thin line of red away from his face. I wasn't expecting that. This might be interesting after all. He didn't even bother to turn as Kashina whispered into existence behind him, didn't flinch as she barreled through his guard once more to strike him solidly in the back of the head. Proof. Kashina swore virulently as the Ichiha popped into a log, vanishing in an effortless replacement. He hadn't even used the seals. Scarce had she thought this than a large hand closed around her wrists and bent them around her back in an effortless motions. Strong notes of a familiar body pressed up behind her, causing her face to flare. She flared chakra to her limbs once more, in an effort to throw him off and nothing. 
Even with her newfound strength, she found she couldn't bring herself to budge him. Not even an inch. What the heck? Forcing. The Chiha murmured from where he held her, bemused by her jutsu. You channel chakra into your bones, to speed your strikes and strengthen your blows. Not bad. Similar to Sanade's technique but less refined. Still, impressive. The Izumaki clan is knowledge in such things after all, seals and whatnot. Would I be correct, in assuming you have a seal here, his gaze ghosted over her bicep, and here. Once more Shikashina burned a great glorious red beneath his gaze, Mureso as his eyes lingered on her thigh, just a touch longer than was necessary. Wait seals. He murmured, awed. Fascinating. One for each limb. You really have improved, Kashina-chan. In more ways than one. Was that last bit just imagined on her part? She hoped it wasn't. Sensei. Kashina struggled in his grasp, but to no avail, he just pulled her closer. This close she could feel his breath on the back of her neck, the latter burning in heat. He was stronger than her, and on some level, a small part of her almost wished he press even closer hey. She swiftly admonished herself with a shake of the head. You can think like that later. After you got the bell. With no other recourse left to her, Kashina did the only thing she could. She released them all at once, jumping up off the ground in the same instant to ram her head into his chin. The chi had grunted in surprise when she made contact, both at the sudden speed and force behind the blow his mouth snapping shut with an audible click more than enough force to bloody his tongue in mid-speak. Red spurted between his lips let it never be said that his mother didn't have a hard head pain exploding in the back of his mind, momentarily distracting him. He'd been hurt again. Kashina had actually managed to inflict all but two wounds in a matter of minutes on him. Granted, he hadn't been giving it all he'd had but still. Abruptly he released Kashina, she stumbled away from him almost as an afterthought. The bell. Her fingers had just brushed it when she realized Naruto was making no effort to stop her. Immediately, she suspected a trap of some sort, but no, he was just standing there, one hand clamped firmly over his mouth. She blinked up at him, her hand still closing around the bell almost of its own will, until she saw the blood. At once, she put two and two together, lunging up with a gasp, when she realized what she'd done. Her hand, refusing to relinquish its hold around the bell, yanked it off the string without a second thought. Sensei. Oddly enough her first thought was not a passing, but for him. Are you alright you're bleeding? Naruto gawped at her in mute disbelief. Ah. She stared down at the bell, realizing what she'd done. You? Ah. Ridiculous. He gasped out with his damaged tongue, staring at her in disbelief. Who the hell does that in combat? He touched a chakra-infused hand to his bloody mouth, rapidly regenerating the wounds she'd given his poor tongue. Letting you guard down like that. If I'd been an enemy, you would be dead. But you're not my enemy. Kashina. Ibiki whirled away from Bunikaze and spat, expelling a geyser of water with enough force to hurl his opponent back into the forest and cancel the summoning. Whatever you do, don't let go of that bell. I figured out the purpose of this test. He wants us to work too. Too late, Naruto's heel snapped outwards and sent the Kanoichi flying. Kashina barely managed to block in time, the 16-year-old nimbly folding her arms over her stomach, not a moment before the Ichiha sandal shoved her off and into her comrade. You were warned that I wouldn't make any more concessions. Naruto pointed out, placing a thumb between his teeth once more. But since you seem so eager, I'll show you something special. Behold. Ah, the miracle of shadow clones. He may have gotten no sleep last night thanks to his girls, but those 12 hours hadn't been wasted by the clones either. The doppelgangers he created beforehand had been hard at work with the two summon contracts they'd been gifted, and their results did not disappoint. Smiling serenely, Naruto placed his still bloodied hand to the ground for a second and final time. No simple scorpion came forth this time. It was something larger, angrier, and far more lethal. Kuchi Snow Jutsu. The roar of a dragon, Shikano had to her very bones. Makoto cocked an ear as that terrible howl reverberated through the village. Anyone else would have been Shikento their very bones with fear. But not the Ichiha heirs, being one of the few privy to his newly acquired summons, the others currently sprawled out in bed beside her. Kami, what a night that had been. Honestly, when he does something, he really does go overboard. Kashina had rarely felt fear before. It was almost ironic. She had one of the most powerful Biju lives sealed into her stomach, and yet she'd hardly ever experienced true terror. Oh, she felt a very small fear before when she'd been kidnapped, but that it all but vanished, when Naruto sensei came to save her. Since then she'd worked hard to become stronger, and in the progress she'd made during the last month, she thought there was nothing she could not face. That is until now. Until this very moment in which Naruto laid a hand upon the ground and called forth hell. Terror. Their knees knocked together as a massive tail split the earth in twine, his black, pointed tip swing with malice and meanings. Her soul quivered as the bone-shattering snarl of a legendary creature rent the air apart like tissue paper, its cruel claws tearing great gouges out of the earth. Ahimit. Naruto barked, arms folded, standing tall and proud upon the beast's head. He may not be the king of dragons, but he'll do for this demonstration. Well shit. Ibiki muttered beside her. That's not fair at all. 
The creature that rose out of that smoke was nothing short of massive, its scalded wings whiter than the trees, bleak scales blotting out the sun itself. Large didn't even begin to define it. The summons towered over her, over the field black eyes surveying the entire grounds with but a glance. A puff of smoke spurted between its nostrils as it exhaled, teeth the size of small buildings gnashing together in slight annoyance at being summoned so suddenly, and out of the blue. What do you want, boy? Its voice shook the very heavens, a lone eye rolling up to peer at the human standing upon its crest. We agreed you would not summon me, unless you had a worthy foe for me to face. See that girl down there? He pointed at Kashina, she's the host of the Kyubi no Yuko. Worthy enough for you. Interesting. The dragon rumbled, fangs pulling back in a rictus of a grin. It has indeed been an age, since I last fought with the old fox. But I sense she has no control over it. Besides, even were we to fight, our battle would all but destroy your village. Perhaps I would be interested when she has better control over it. That's not very nice, Tebane. Nevertheless, you are still weak. Bahamut huffed, indignant. And I have no interest in weak opponents. We will meet again when you are stronger, Uzumaki. I pray for your sake that you are able to entertain me when the time comes. Until then, farewell. He vanished in a resounding plume of smoke, leaving Naruto to light neatly on the ground. Man, dragons real are hard to control. He said, almost rolly. Now do you see? If he hadn't already eaten, the two of you would have been snacks. You two got lucky. Very lucky. In the future, you'll be fighting enemies who won't hesitate to make mincemeat of you or worse. His gaze slid to Kashina, kidnap you and use your bodies for their own nefarious purposes. Her subsequent shiver said that he'd drilled the point into her. Now since someone decided to mess up my little exercise, we're going to switch things up a bit. Slowly, almost languidly, he took an arm from his pocket. Kashina collapsed onto her hands and knees, painfully aware that she'd been saved by the dragon's pride. Had Naruto actually six set beast on them, they wouldn't have stood a chance. But now what was he up to inside that head of his? Was he going to summon something else? She started, suddenly realizing that despite all odds, she hadn't let go of the bell since she claimed it. None of this made sense. Unless, he was trying to mislead them. But I thought you said only one of us could pass. She held up the trinket that was the bell, and for a split second, a flicker of approval crossed the blonde's visage. He took a single step backward, bringing himself nigh up against one of the many trees leading into the forest. Her eyes snapped to him immediately. Clever girl. She picked right up on that. So you finally going to fight us? A biggie challenge, his confidence finally on the rise. In a sense, Naruto drew a line at the earth with his foot. Your new mission is to make me move over the slime. Into the forest works, too. Ha! That'll be easy. Kashina slid forward into a taijutsu stance, confident she could surprise him yet again. After all, she'd already made him move once. Don't think I'll make the same mistake twice. Naruto. Hey. She swore drawing a kunai of her own. No fair. Aren't you going to at least try and fight seriously? She immediately regretted those words as the Mingekyo Sharingan flared. I suppose I could attempt it. Wait a second. Or? Naruto's only response was to bite his thumb again. Would emerge this time no scorpion or dragon. Something far more simple. It had been a gift from the Shinigami some time ago, and he just hadn't gotten around to using it, not seeing a time or a need. But these kids were beginning to get on his nerves. Two of them had already ascertained the purpose of his little test, and what's more, they'd ruined his fun. So, really, it was only natural that they repaid him, no. Brandishing it, he reveled in the slight gasp that went up from Ibiki. That fan. Ah. Naruto smiled beaningly, lofting the large weapon as though it were no more than a feather's weight. You recognize this, Ibiki-kun. That's right. It belonged to my ancestor, Ichiha Madara. Which means. Still smiling he swept it forwards. You know what it can do. But but he could brain the boy with the deadly weapon. The forest erupted into movement. Earlier. The Waki had spent a good five minutes pondering his next move at the bottom of the lake, tucked away in a bubble of air. It wasn't all that draining to maintain, especially when one considered he needed only cover his head, and replenish the oxygen every few seconds. He knew farewell his teammates were fighting and losing up above, and despite all his eagerness, he was loath to join them. So, here he has sat, trying to figure out just how he was going to beat Sensei and get that thrice damned bell. Admittedly, those options were limited. Naruto had hit dangerously close to the mark when he'd claimed the boy had no jutsu to call his own. Close, but not quite. He did have one technique that he'd been saving for a special occasion. It wasn't all that fast, but it was powerful and draining. A single use could leave him almost entirely exhausted, but if it worked, Sensei wouldn't be in any position to fend him off. Not to mention he was one of only two shinobi who had the potential to do it. Darn it, he'd really wanted to surprise everyone, too. Stealing himself he extended his senses, reaching out to every tree in the grounds. He felt their life force like a warm ray of sunshine, even here at the bottom of the lake. Still further he stretched his senses, even going so far, as to pop a soldier pill and cease breathing within his tiny bubble of air. 
he had to concentrate, he would need every fiber of his focus if this were to work. The slightest break in concentration could prove disastrous. While steepling in concentration, he clasped his fingers together. Mokujin. Mokujin. Naruto whirled as the trees of the field came alive before his very eyes, roots rapidly erupting beneath his feet, snarling around his right arm before he'd even a chance to react. Would release what the hell. He felt the roots tugging down on his arm with incredible strength, and it actually required some of his own to resist. The timing couldn't have been worse, no sooner was he bound, than Kashina and Ibiki chose that moment to gang up on him, not individually as one might expect, but in tandem. The lucky, you marvelous bastard. Aren't I awesome? Naruto didn't see the boy emerge from the tree line, didn't even realize that Genin had stepped straight out a tree itself. He was too busy trying, not to laugh out of the irony of it all. Kashina looked like she was about to bounce out of sheer glee. Wait a sec, what was that emerging from her back? Boy. The latter completely baffled him with the emergence of her chakra chains, something he had never seen or known to have existed. Those deadly barbs were as fleet as they were agile, holding his free hand fast, her golden tethers binding the limb back before he could act. And that was before Ibiki summoned forth those wires from God knew where, effectively binding him in place against the three with a violent tug. Naruto almost smiled at the audacity of such an attack. He'd been pinned once before in his youth with this very move, he had a feeling he knew what was coming next. Yami was less tact when faced with the sudden reversal. Cheeky little. For a very long moment, Naruto simply smiled within his powerful prison of chains and wood and wires. He'd known all along that Sanade and Nawaki were the grandchildren of the first Hokage. Hell, everyone knew that. But never, never, had he dared to dream the boy to awaken his blood in the midst of a battle, or had he achieved this power even before then. Regardless it was a milestone. Not nearly enough to hold him for more than a few seconds, but still, for Genin to unlock his bloodline. And despite his expectations, the kids his kids had managed to bind him. God, it was almost enough to make him proud. Or you can know Jutsu. Those thoughts fell apart as Ibiki opened his mouth and exhaled, expelling a familiar dragon of flame. Naruto blanched, it was much larger, than the one Sasuke had spat at him. Oi oi oi, isn't that a little excessive? Holding back or not, that could really hurt him. His armed arm bristled, muscles bulging as he used his full strength to tear it free. He flung it up before his face. Akram. The ensuing explosion was nothing short of spectacular, blinding his gen into the chaos they'd inadvertently wrought. But the smoke finally cleared they could see the Ichiha was utterly unharmed, having tore himself free from Nuwaki's bonds, and raised a war fan before his face, to shield himself from the blow. Wait. How was that possible? Mutters or not, the fan was made of paper and metal, there was just no way it could have withstood Ibiki's inferno. That, wasn't bad. Naruto grunted, levering himself up once more. But even with your teamwork, you still couldn't make me move. Now it's my turn. Naruto closed his eyes and dug deep within himself, opening all his chakra points, and releasing them as one. The result was as violent as it was immediate, a simple flex of muscles and his unnatural bonds quite brilliantly shattered, spraying energy in either direction. Battered by its abrupt release, the kids never saw him raise his war fan until it was too late. The Chiha reflection. Scarce had he spoke than the wicked weapon flared a fiery red, and true to his name, released the absorbed firestorm, hurling the contained inferno back to greet them the three teens within all its fury. Kashina had just enough time to gasp before the explosion hit, before Naruto realized he had inadvertently returned the technique with its full power still, lacking true control over the fan thereby, flinging a very dangerous and extremely powerful jutsu at his students without thinking. Shit. He started forward into the smoke with an angry hiss, peering with his Sharingan, idly fearing the worst as it began to clear. Hey. A rough voice greeted him. That hurt, Tabane. The Chiha froze. Kurama slid at her eyes and stared back at him from within Kashina's visage, her lips pulled in a wide feral grin. A single hand had been flung forwards to guard against the returning attack, and it had done so quite spectacularly in her own right, shielding her teammates on either side. Naruto braced himself for an attack, but he needn't have bothered. Even, as he looked on, Kashina actually laughed, her now crimson orbs dancing brightly. She pointed at the line. Sure enough his foot had crossed it, his sandal toes well over the barrier he'd created. You, lose, sensei. There was a silence as those words sank in. The crackle of thunder split the air. Well, shit. He murmured, scratching the back of his head. They'd gotten him. Fair and square. You guys. Pass. That lone word met with a flurry of movement from his team. Kashina screamed at the top of her lungs, Iwaki was left mutter unintelligible words, Ibiki blew a smoke ring and passed out. What? Just like that. The Chiha painted a soft smile across his face. You already know the answer. Teamwork, Kashina's voice was surprisingly hoarse, when she finally found it. You wanted us to work together, Tabane. Give the lovely lady a prize. Really, he shouldn't have been surprised by what came next. I want Raymond. So it was that Naruto found his hard-earned payment from his first mission spiraling into the bottomless pit that was Kashina's stomach. 
Ibiki and Iwaki had each enjoyed a single bowl, and he himself a few more, but the Redeed was well past her sixth and still going. Well, at least he didn't have to wonder where he'd gotten his fixation from. Still, how could 160 and year old girl lead that much? In the time it had taken him to try and think even that much, she already moved on to her eighth ah, make that her ninth. Ah, does all that Raymond go straight to her chest or something? It had certainly explained the breasts. Yasha, you're finally starting to see things my way, partner. I'm not even gonna argue that. Quite the eater, isn't she? Someone said from off to the side. You can say that again, Naruto muttered, turning his head toward the voice, an easy smile leaping to his face without thinking. She really is one hell of a. Then he saw who had spoken. Every fiber in his body froze, black eyes threatening to try, and bulge clear out of his head if he didn't sow something to control them. Kakashi-sensei. No. Wait. This wasn't Kakashi. Now that he looked, Naruto was able to calm himself. Yes the resemblance was there, but upon closer inspection, this fellow was certainly not him. For starters there was no mask, the jaw was square, both eyes were black, and his white hair was bound back in a ponytail, oddly reminiscent of the one Jirei wore. Furthermore, he bore a white sleeve on the right, and a tanto strapped to his back, likely the cause of a certain epithet which escaped the former blonde at the moment. Kakashi had none of those things. No, this man was undoubtedly, Hataki Sakumo. Part of him wanted to dance at meeting the Kakashi's father, but he stubbornly suppressed it. He couldn't be prone to such flights of fancy, anymore. Not if he intended to save the future. Rolling his shoulders, he willed himself to relax. Be at ease. Calm. Cruel. Confident. Stealing himself, he looked the man dead in the eye. I don't believe we've met, Naruto said, slapping on his best poker face another thing, this body was good for and extending a hand. I'm Ichiha Naruto. Please make your acquaintance. Sakumo didn't shake. I've heard of you. Was all he would say. Frowning, Naruto lowered his hand. Fine. He was going to be like that, then. So, what brings you here? I just thought I'd stop to congratulate Kashina on her new team. Sakumo said with a smile, as a feeling of death hovered in the air between the two of them. That and I wanted to meet the man who saved me the hassle of going down to the border. The little birdie told me he'd been promoted and would be leading a team into Omigakure later this evening. Surprise, surprise my little girl, just so happens to be on it. Naruto did not flinch at the slight, but inwardly, he quailed. Gah. The man was treating him like he was asking Sakumo for Kashina's hand, or something. Gathering his courage, Naruto willed himself to look the older man square in the eye, refusing to flinch. She has nothing to fear from me. Ah. Then he paused, considering the man's words about the rain. I won't let any harm come to her either. A few seats down, Kashina pricked up, ears twitching. Yes, so I've been told. She seems quite fond of you. Sakumo's smile didn't slacken in the slightest, but there was just a note of tension in his voice. Obviously, he didn't trust him. Just so you know, she's the closest thing I have to a daughter, not discounting my son. Now, I've seen how you've made your way around this village, you've got the eye of almost every Kanoichi on you. Probably even betted a few. So, from one man to another, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and warn you before you go, and do anything stupid like that with Kashina. Hi. Naruto felt himself frown, not liking where this was going. Not at all. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Then allow me to spell it out for you. When next he spoke his eyes were like glacial ice, cold, callous, promising a world of pain. You break her heart, and I break you. Ha. Naruto blanched at the man. You heard me, Ichiha. Once again that aura of dread appeared around him, the very air thick with malicious intent as the area around the white hat seemed to darken, as if there was a small solar eclipse happening just around Sakumo and nowhere else. Then it happened. Even Naruto could not suppress a small shudder when it appeared, a Henia mask, the kind used in Japanese no theater to represent a jealous demon or serpent. It crawled out from behind the man's deceptively slight frame a mask of hatred that seemed to pierce your very soul. The fact that he had a pleasant smile on his face just made the look that much more creepy. You would do well to take good care of her. Understood. Yikes. This man made Orchimaru look tame. Ahahaha, I'll remember that. Good. The white head smiled and just like that, the aura of menace was gone. See that you do, and we won't have any problems. He slapped a hefty Ryo note down onto the countertop. Here. That ought to pay for whatever she eats. It'd be such a shame, if you weren't able to make your rent this month. Sakumo. The man never got to finish that sentence, as a furious Kashina thrust herself between them, her eyes ablaze, every strand of her lustrous hair standing on end. Despite the ire not being directed him, Naruto cringed off to the side out of pure awe. She'd really earned the title of bloody habanero. Sakumo on the other hand, didn't bat so much an eyelash, when faced with the woman's wrath. He stood tall, and stern beneath the crashing waves of her angry, an immutable rock for her fury to break upon. I told you not to threaten him. She admonished, berating the larger man with a finger. You're going to scare him off. Someone has to keep an eye on your chastity. The man replied, utterly unfazed. You're only 16, Kashina. 
That's too young to restart your clan. A tick mark formed on the Uzumaki's forehead. I, you, I mean, that's not of your business, Tebbing. Would you be willing to share him, then? You would. The fire in Naridid's eyes sputtered and died as though he dropped a bucket of water on her head. For a heartbeat just a heartbeat Naruto felt her gaze swivel to him, those violet orbs brimming with more questions than he was willing to answer. Ibiki and Iwaki were making a point not to look at him, doing their best to stay out of it, as Kushina pinned on him with her gaze. In hindsight although the sinister silence seemed to stretch onto eternity, it lasted all of an instant. Why the hell would I care about that? Naruto fastened him so hard he fractured the counter. Sakumo blinked, thunderstruck. At last, both men seemed to recover their composure. Well, it's your decision. Sakumo smiled, but it didn't quite reach his eyes, not as he turned his gaze upon Naruto. But remember what I said, Ichiha. The ex-blonde watched Kakashi's father depart with relief, quietly shivering at his passage. Scary. So, Nakoto got to you first, didn't she? It was not a question. She knew. Someone she managed to figure it out, just from Sakumo's simple hint. He'd underestimated her. I was wondering why she was so cheery, what with Higaku, being in a coma but damn, that's sneaky. I'll have to get her back for that. Among others. The words slipped out before he could think to stop them. Yet he felt nothing but relief. Sakumo had been right in that regard. He needed to be honest with her. The last thing he wanted to do was take her heart and shatter it into a thousand pieces. Others. He sighed, regretting it already. Yeah, it's kind of a long story. Tell me. Oi 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 oi, it's my life we're talking about here. He fixed her with his best Ichiha glower. I don't see why I'm inclined to tell you any. Kashina didn't falter, not in the slightest. Stare. Although she might not be his mother in this day and age, Naruto's resolve was no match for the determined Uzumaki. Within minutes, she knew of Pekur and Kurur, and while he went to great pangs to exempt what he believed would be too much for her to bear, he had the sinking suspicion the young Uzumaki knew exactly what had transpired between him and the three Kanoichi. There was no anger from her. No tears. No shouts or swears or even screams on her part. Just silence. She simply sat there and just stared at him, her violet eyes boring holes into his forehead. It was like being faced with a completely different person. Naruto didn't think he could handle something like that. Look, I'm sorry if I upset you or anything. He said at last, shattering the impasse between them. But I'm not exactly the poster boy for good behavior around these parts. You should find someone nice, someone like that Minato kid. I mean, he's your age and all. Sorry. Eh? Looking, he never did get to finish that sentence. I said, sorry. Abruptly, Kashina dropped out of her seat, red hair twirling from the motion. Her lips were suddenly brushing his cheek, her words softer than sand. But you're not getting rid of me that easy, sensei. A shiver of surprise shot down his spine. If I've got compassion, then I'll just have to try harder. Naruto jerked back, baffled. Where the hell had that come from? What? Kashina flushed, her earlier boldness vanishing with a stray autumn breeze. I am not saying it again, date evening. Besides, her face crinkled in a confused frown, why would I be interested in Minato? He's been acting weird, lately. Pretty sure he has a crush on you. Really? She blinked, baffled by his words. I've hardly spoken so much as two words to him, and even when I do, he's always shooing me away so he can train or something. Why would I be interested in someone like that? Naruto opened up his mouth to protest otherwise and snapped it shut. Ah. It made sense now. Because Minato hadn't been the one to save Kashina, she'd never noticed him. Oh no, her radar was fixated firmly upon him. The Chiha had not only rescued and mentored her, but was now her teacher. Minato was little more than a speck in her heart now. Score. The father is officially out of the way. Now, move in for the kill. Kashina, I... Look, can we not talk about this now? She pleaded, flushing under his penetrating gaze. I mean what I said but, she suddenly squirmed, hands writhing like snakes in her lap. It's embarrassing, Tebane. I mean you're my sensei now, and you probably think I'm all weird for liking you, when you've got everyone interested in you. You're right. Naruto was suddenly aware that half the restaurant seemed to be staring at the two of them. Let's just enjoy our ramen. Oh, thank Kami. She promptly returned to stuffing her face with Raymond, before he could press her for details. Naruto, relieved for the change of subject, focused on his own meal. This was it then. He was doomed. He'd laid out each and every cards for her, given her every chance to fold, to turn back, and she hadn't. She was still here. Being troublesome. Making things difficult. Did he mention troublesome? Ibiki and Iwaki were wise enough, to keep their mouths shut, stay silent, and enjoy their free meal. Good thing too. Naruto was in the mood to inflict a thousand years of pain on someone, even his students. Well, that'd be a first. A horse voice chuckled at him. Hmm. This time, Naruto turned his head slowly, not wanting to be caught by surprise. But it was a young Tuchi he laid eyes on. No surprise there. Aim hadn't been born yet. Still reeling from Sakumo's implied threats, he didn't have much stomach for nostalgia. The man's next words made it even less so. 
You're the first man Sakumo hasn't scared away. He said. I've never seen her stick up for anyone like that before. She must really like you. He does this kind of thing often. But of course. The man chuckled. Kashina-chan is our favorite customer. Sakumo is always treating her to Raymond. I'm honestly surprised the Hokage didn't make him her new teacher after Karo died. Naruto shot a withering glare at the man's retreating back suddenly, understanding just why Sakumo had tried to scare the crap out of him. Still, who was this Karo fellow? Had he been Kashina's old sensei? Sirotobi had suggested that Kashina was once already part of a team. But he'd mentioned no names. So many questions. He stole a glance at his student, suddenly feeling intensely protective. I won't let anything happen to her. Yami pounced before he could take the words back. Will said. And if anything should happen between you two, all's fair in love and war, right? Why do I put up with you again? Because if you got rid of me, you have no one left to argue with. Point taken. Naruto shook his head in mild exasperations, ignoring the chuckle of the older man, as he raised his gaze to the roof of his favorite establishment. It really was nostalgic, treating his students to Raymond like this. Even if one of them was his mother of fact he seemed to find himself forgetting more and more often as of late. It was becoming something of a problem, his mom though she might someday be, it was becoming increasingly difficult to reconcile this young woman with a woman he barely even knew. As much as it might gall him to admit it he was attracted to her. He was a young man after all, and she a young woman. It certainly did not help that his heart was already tangled up with three women. He cared about them. And now he was starting to care about her. Why? That was the only thing he could ask himself. Why now? And why her? It was not Kashina's fault, and he didn't blame the girl, well, not completely. Had Kashina never arrived he would have never started feeling this way. But it wasn't like she had intended for this to happen, it wasn't like Kashina even knew what was really happening. That still didn't change his question. Why? It was almost as if. A loud crash, punctuated by a very female shriek, ended that thought before it could bloom. Why are you always as staring at my chest? Here we go again. Kashina muttered around a mouthful of Raymond. The blonde's head whipped around hard enough to give his neck whiplash. His ears pricked up, his head turning towards the voice. It hadn't been Kashina, she was far too absorbed in her Raymond to notice his wandering eye. No, that voice hadn't been hers. Still it was oddly familiar. It almost sounded like but that was impossible. Intrigued, he trained his attention the two voices. Almost unbidden, Naruto found his attention drawn off Kashina and into the spectacle. Someone female was shouting, stuttering yes, but still clearly incensed by her comrade's actions. Hashisama, I did not mean to. TH then stopped stirring, Hiashi. I was merely using my Byakugan to ensure that you weren't under any duress. You were staring. Smack. A resounding gasp put an end to those words in the same instant that Naruto dislodged himself from his stool, sandal feet touching the ground in the same instant that his body came careening through the blinds to put an end to the conflict. He barely heard Kashina's muffled cry of sensei, don't, at his back but too late. His body was already in motion, his fingers wrapping firmly around the young man's wrist, before he could, so much as bat an eyelash, wrenching his arm up and out of harm's way. I think you should leave the lady alone, friend. He rumbled, Mingekyo flaring for emphasis. Don't you? Subsequent silence was deafening. Yeah, pretty sure you just made the kid piss his pants. Alright he admitted to himself, maybe we should have used more tact. We? What's this we business, partner? Imagine his surprise when he found himself face to face with a young Hyuga Hiyashi, impossible not to recognize that damned face bickering with a young woman who could have been Hinata's biological twin, were it but for two things, the short bop of her ebony not dark blue hair and a pale, crescent shaped scar taking up residence on her right cheek. The injury looked fairly recent to his eyes, it had the look of a wound that had only recently been tended to, possibly yesterday even. She stared at him in surprise, her mouth opened in a small round o of confusion, not expecting a stranger to come to her aid. Pardon me, she tripped over the word, but who are you? Ah, Goman. Sorry about this. Naruto gently relaxed the iron vice that is grip, allowing Hiyashi to wrench his arm free not a moment afterward. The name's Naruto. I'm still rather new to the village and well I couldn't help but overhear your little squabble. Sharingan eyes swiveled upon Hiyashi with an almost frigid disparity, causing the younger man to flinch. This guy bothering you. He was just leaving, actually. Hinata's mother he was damned certain this was her smiled sweetly, stammering ever so slightly. Isn't that right, Hiyashi? Hashihime, I must insist. Hiyashi leveled an angry glare at Naruto. This Achiha, he cannot be trusted. Noted. Those lavender eyes were like chips of diamond, harsh and unflinching. You are dismissed, Hiyashi. As you wish. Shamefaced by her curt dismissal, the young man whirled, and stalked away down the street. Naruto fought the urge, to stick out his tongue at the shinobi's retreating back. What an asshole. He might have mellowed out in more recent years, but a young Hiyashi was still every bit of the prick he remembered from his youth. Still, Hashi has surprised him with her sternness. Where had that stuttering girl gone? 
The moment he had stepped in, she seemed more confident, more everything. Hot damn. Yami whistled wolfishly. Like mother like daughter. She's got a spine of steel when she wants to. Naruto resolutely ignored the wily words his darker hawk was whispering. You gonna be alright? He asked of her. Yes. The young woman bowed, her head inclining in a jerky bob. Th thank you for your assistance in this matter, Ichiha-sama. Ma, we're both Kanoha Shinobi here. He raised a hand to scratch at the back of his head, slightly flustered by the formality just call me Naruto. You're that one, aren't you? Pardon. The Black Death. That seems to be my moniker of late, yes. Sorry. It's just you're taller than I thought you would be. Handsome, too. Ha. Ha she squeaked, her face flaring a fire engine red. I, I need to go. Good luck, Hashi-san. Kashina enthused shortly at a retreating comrade, then returned to her feast. Naruto let her go and reluctantly returned to the stand himself, claiming a stall beside his student. So was that. Oh, her. The Redeep blinked. That's Hashi. She's about a year older than me, daughter of some main branch Hyuga. Some says she's next in line. You know, to take over. Right up there with Hiyashi team. Not very confident though, so she probably won't be the successor. A sad, date evening. An almost resigned note entered her voice, those violet eyes hardening, just a fraction before she continued devouring her food. We used to play together when we were little. She's a good person, we used to play together when we were little. Still is. I'd hate to see her get branded with that god-awful seal. Naruto quietly gawped. But she looks just like. Shaking himself, he returned his attention to Kashina. Why would they do that? You said so yourself, she's from the main branch. The Redeed fixed him with a pointed look. You really don't know much about this village, do you? Naruto shook his head. Hashi told me, once. Her family doesn't like the way she does things. Too forward thinking. If she became the clan head, they probably wouldn't put that thing on her. But if she doesn't. She sucked down a mouthful of noodles, gulped, and frowned, losing herself in the broth. That's how the village is nowadays. If you're different they either bully you or find some way to silence you hey. Those words ended in a tiny cry of flustered surprise as he reached down and tousled her hair, inadvertently pushing her hishie down over her eyes. Give me a list of names, and I'll pay them a visit for you, I won't let anyone badmouth a student of mine. She smiled then, and it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. You're nice, sensei. Maybe, but you've definitely got me beat when it comes to Raymond. Hahaha, <laughs> Kashina surprised him with a very sinister chuckle. That's right, Tabane. No one can beat me. Beating. Naruto suddenly thought back to the mark on Hashi's cheek, and the way she'd held her arm to her chest. Those wounds had they been inflicted by Jayukin. If so then that would mean. Ah oh Christ I better not regret this. Ah, I just remembered something, he lied. I need to purchase more kunai before we leave. Suit yourself. Kashina laughed, snatching his bowl up. More for me. God, she ate like she hadn't been fed in days or something. Another item Naruto resolved to rectify. Raymond was all well and good, but she needed to balance out her diet. As he. Actually, he continued, sitting back down, I think I'll wait. Um, okay. She blinked at him, confused. Subtly swapping himself with a shadow clone, and with his team none the wiser, Naruto followed after the Hyuga. He wasn't quite sure what had caused him to do it, it might have been her frightening resemblance to Hinata, or because he just felt sorry for the poor girl. Nobody deserved to get ogled like that. Nobody deserved that god-awful seal. She wasn't all that hard to find, she stuck out in her kimono like a sore thumb. Even so, he almost slammed right into her back when she spun around. Naruto-san. She stammered out, her cheeks dusted the lightest shade of pink. Is there something else you wanted? Actually, Naruto kindly returned the bow. There was something. How did you get those wounds? Hashi went pale and subconsciously tucked her injured arm closer to herself. I have no idea what you're talking about. I think you do. No, I don't. Naruto frowned, eyes crinkling at the edges in quiet contemplation. Once, he would have accepted her words. But after the world of brutality he'd lived through in the fourth shinobi war, he wasn't about to let something like that slide. Without thinking he reached out and took her arm. Hashi whimpered in pain, cringing his side as he rolled up her sleeve. That was when he saw the bruises. Whomever had done this hadn't struck to inflict pain on their opponent. They'd been trying to torment her, blocking the chakra points, just so to inflict the maximum amount of hurt as the Jayukin wore off. His showering and detected subtle traces of Hiyashi's chakras tied down in her coils where she'd been struck. One look at her body language told him the Hyuga was in active discomfort just by walking. This this was. Vicious. Did he do this to you? His voice was hard to find in that instant and she colored, her pale cheeks flushing a rosy red. I? No, Naruto thought to himself. No more denials. I don't like liars, Hashi-san. The poor Hyuga wilted beneath his gaze. Hiyashi was just expressing concern over my injuries. Her tone told him she very much doubted that was the case. Naruto had seen the look in his eye. He'd been ogling her, fronting over her like a piece of meat. If he had been the one to inflict these wounds, and then the gull asked about them, he would. Do what? 
Yami challenged him. What are you going to do to a member of the Hyuga clan? Beat him. Kill him. Without suffering repercussions. Even I'm not that foolish. Shut. Up. Holy shit, you're actually pissed about this, aren't you? I don't believe it. I mean, you always did have a soft spot for the Hyuga, but damn ow. I'm about to get a whole lot angrier if you don't cork it. Naruto couldn't help himself, he was reminded of a certain Hyuga during the Chunin preliminaries, the beating she had suffered at the hands of her cousin. The only difference here was that argument was between two members of the main household, and it smacked of brutality. He didn't like it. Not one bit. Skiing softly, he began to open her chinketsu with his own chakra in a slow series of pokes, ignoring her quiet cries of surprise as he effortlessly reversed the damage that had been done her. I tie. She helped when a particularly painful point reopened, her cry drawing attention from passerby. Finishing up with her chinketsu, he healed the fractures in her arms, as well mending them with medicinal chakra in such swift succession that Sanade herself would have been hard pressed to match him. He deliberately left a trace of his own energy to linger there in a warning. Something like that would be readily seen by anyone possessing the Byakugan. None would understand it, save for Hiyashi. The Nine or Nadi would know what Naruto had done the moment laid eyes on Hashi, hopefully he wouldn't understand the silent threat. Hurt her one more time and you'll never be able to use Jayukin again. How did you do that? Hashi blinked, eyeing the now flawless skin of her limb. The bruises they were gone. As though they'd never been. You learn a lot of things when you're on your own. He replied, a low growl snaking between his teeth as Hiyashi's brutality flickered through his mind. Still this is unacceptable. He's part of your clan. Family shouldn't do this to each other. I've half a mind too. No. Don't. I appreciate all you've done for me. Hashi gushed, performing another perfunctory bow. Really. I do. We barely know each other. She risked another glance at her arm, and you didn't have to do that, but you did, for which I thank you. Besides, at Naruto's ire, she hastily continued. You're being groomed to be the Chiha's heir, aren't you? There it was again that damnable rumor that he was going to take over the Chiha clan, now more fact than fiction. And for once, he couldn't bring himself to deny it. I don't want you to sully your reputation on my behalf. But, but, if I can take up just another moment of your time. Without thinking, his hand closed around hers. Looking back, he wasn't sure what spurred the action, perhaps it was pity. Perhaps he knew what it was like to be bullied and have no one care. Whatever the case, he did not fail to notice her fierce flush the moment his rugged hands met her soft palms. I've all the time in the world. She was silent for a very long time after then. When she finally spoke, her voice was the most naked whisper. What do you think I should do? Talking a deep breath, the Uzumaki in disguise calmed himself. He needed to be rational here. No matter how much you wish to push past her and storm into the Hyuga compound, then kick Yashi's ass from one end of Kanoha to the other. Rational, right? Calm. Well, the way I see it, it's your heart. You have to make the decision for yourself. Naruto frowned, thumbing his chin, drawing upon the lazy yet effective wisdom of an old friend. Besides, guys like that tend to swing one way or another. Either he's bothering you, because he really likes you, and he's sorry for what he did, which I seriously doubt, or, he's just a pervert, that you need to smack down before he gets the wrong idea. And if he's hurting you out of pure spite, you can't ignore that. I see. She nodded, faltering on the last word. Are you like that as well, Ichiha-kun? It took him all of three seconds to realize the kun in there, then, and that she'd spoken of the former tense, not the latter. Otakami. Naruto jolted. Who? Me? Oh, no. No, no, no. He swiftly flung up his hands, old memories of Sakura and Sanade rushing to the fore. I try to look at the eyes first, you know. Get to know someone first maybe take him out on a date or two, before I even think of staring. I've been clobbered white too many times when I was little to gop at someone's chest now. It's rude, you know. Ah. She stared at him for a long moment after that, contemplating. The smile when it came, brightened her visage, so much like her namesake. Father was wrong about you. He was. Naruto cocked his head aside, confused at the less than honorable mention. He never met Hinata's grandfather in his lifetime, there was virtually nothing for him to fall back on, let alone draw into this little conversation he'd accidentally stkan who was Hashi's father. What was he like? Technically being her father made him both Hinata's and Hanabi's grandfather, yet knowing that did absolutely nothing to aid him in their situation. In the end, he settled for a shrug. Well, I suppose I should be flattered. Hi. She nodded. He said you were just like the others. But you're not. You're kinder than your clansmen. Yeah, I miss her congeniality. That got a slight smile again. I have enjoyed this talk. She said at last, stealing a glance over her shoulder to the Hyuga compound, looking a sore sight better than she'd been when they'd first met. Perhaps we could do it again, sometime. She had her healed arm behind her back shyly, a silent reminder of the kindness he had done her. He was reminded, so much of Hinata in that instant back for she'd taken that knife and, BR. Shaking himself of that dreadful image, the Chiha once more painted a soft smile on his face to address the possible heirs. Sure. 
We'll make a date of it when I get back from my mission. He meant it as a joke, but the way her eyes lit up. Yes, she stuttered out. I would like that, ah, very much. You're off to rain, aren't you? Then, here, at his hesitant nod, she reached around her neck and unbound the necklace she'd been wearing. At least, he thought of it as a necklace. It wasn't until she removed it that he recognized the yin yang symbol reminiscent of the Hyuga clan, bound in a small other token as a twir. A charm. Naruto blinked as she pushed it into his hands not an instant later, its leather cord pulling neatly into palm. For good luck. Another bow, another smile that made his heart skip a beat. Take care Naruto-kun. Naruto felt his throat run dry as he watched her retreat into the safety of the Hyuga compound. Did I just encourage Hinata's mom? Oh, snap. Groaning, the Chiha performed an about face and started back the way he'd come, Yami leaving him to stew in his own bleak thoughts. Something was definitely at work here. What in the nine circles of hell was going on? He seemed to be befriending, or outright betting the mothers of his generation. Or having them crush on him, in Kashina's case. First her and Makoto, then Kurura, Kakura, now he just befriended Hinata's mom on top of it. Honestly, if it weren't for Kakura, he'd think there was some kind of pattern at work here. Maybe there was. He didn't know. Truly he cared for these girls, each of them, so why did he feel so damn guilty about the possibility of fathering most of his old friends? Maybe you should stop licking a gift horse in the mouth, and just run with it, partner. Trust me, you'd be a lot happier that way. You might be right. He thought to himself. Fuck it. I'm not even going to bother worrying about this shit anymore. What happens, happens. He was growing wary of burdening himself with the what-ifs of this time, a problem he didn't need when he already had the fate of a world riding on his shoulders. Now that's more like it. Welcome to the dark side, my son. Yeah, well don't get used to me agreeing with you, jackass. He was just about to substitute himself with the clone he'd left back at Ichiraku when he hand closed upon his shoulder. Why the long face, man? Naruto's gaping mouth snapped shut with an audible click, a muscle jumping in his jaw. You know, I've had just about enough of being picked at today, Dr. Bayo. Well there, no need to get snappy. Boy. The reborn Ichiha spun around, intent on biting the intruder's head off right and proper, when he found himself face to face with none other than a young Shikakunar. Him, and a striking raven-haired woman at his elbow. Now, Naruto recognized the man's face almost immediately though slightly less grizzled, and lacking the trademark scar he remembered the ponytail, and lazy demeanor were like a kunai to the face impossible to miss and easy to recognize, especially in Jonin uniform. God, he kept running into familiar faces today. The woman on the other hand the man's girlfriend, perhaps. Now she was a mystery. Naruto felt as though he should know her somehow, but all he got from her was lingering sense of nostalgia. Ah. Whomever she was. Troublesome. Hmm. The woman's smile showed teeth, a voice varying from saccharine to poisonous, emerged from those full lips. Those girls from the sand village were right. You really are kind. Hardworking, too. Nothing like Shikaku, over here. Her smile seemed to touch more deadly as she turned her gaze upon him. You haven't taken a mission in like what, a week now? Hey, it's not my fault. The Nara gave a jaw-popping yawn. The Hokages got me earmarked for some black hop and kiri, once the fuss and Ame dies down. Something about pulling some clans to the village. Naruto's right ear twitched at that remark, Onyx's eyes shining with a rare intrigue. Now this was news. He'd already assumed that he would have to take matters with Kiri into his own hands. But the old monkey was actually giving it enough thought to assemble a team. And Shikaku was going to be on it. Wait, you going to be on that mission, too? What, you actually know about that? Shikaku blinked, his perennial smile vanishing in an eye blink. Who told you? I was the one to suggest it. Kiri hasn't taken any action against us yes, and with their Mizukage losing his mind, I thought now was as good a time as any to get some of their people to safety. Not to mention bring in a slew of powerful bloodline wielders, in case things go south later in the war. But he didn't tell Shikaku that. No one needed to know that Naruto was angling to get the Yuki and Kaguya clans on their side. And possibly a certain strawberry blonde as she was around in this day and year bad. Bad Naruto. He had enough problems as it was without worrying about Meiturumi. Wherever she was, he was certain she could take care of herself. Maybe. Hopefully. Well shit, the Nara frowned, dragging him back to reality. The Sandarime did mention that an Ichiha would be leading the task force congratulations, I guess. Naruto felt the back of his neck color at the man's unexpected praise. Gee thanks. HMMPH. Someone snorted in the back of his head. How very like the weak, to bow before the whims of the strong. Naruto froze, then relaxed. Very funny, asshole. Hey, that wasn't me. Yomi piped up. What the fuck? Look, I've got Shikaku right in front of me here, I don't have time for your antics. I swear, I didn't do it. It was someone else. Hey. What? You sure we're not sharing this body with something else? Great. That's the last thing I need. Shaking off his dread, he came to just in time to watch Shikaku getting berated by his as of yet unnamed woman. Is exactly what I'm talking about. She was saying. 
You need to take these things more seriously. That's why you need me on this. What the hell? He grouched. If Naruto wanted you on his mission he would have said so, troublesome woman. Well I don't have any objections. See? Why can't you be more reasonable like him? Ouch, Shikaku muttered, though he seemed to take the insult with a grain of salt. To Naruto, it looked like he had gotten so used to his girlfriend making comments like this, that he had gotten to the point where he simply shrugged the heavy words off. Such harsh words, Yashi, he whined. Do you really hate me that much, Yoshino? What was that, dear? Boy, what did I say this time? Shikaku's voice froze, his mask finally breaking as she took hold of his ear and yanked. Come on, Yoshino. That's not fair. Naruto. Help me out here. And you think I have a strange relationship, Naruto mumbled as he watched the byplay between the two. It was quite apparent that they had a long history together, even so they seemed to bicker like an old married couple, despite the fact that they were way too young to even be engaged. The chi has sweat dropped, even he had seen that verbal gaffe there. Sorry, you kinda walked into that one man. Traitor. Well, good luck to you. Yoshino smiled, tugging her teammate along against his will. Keep those kids alive, alright. I'm almost looking forward to that mission of yours now. Something in that stare of hers made a tiny part of him cower, she wouldn't take no for an answer. And he thought Sakuma was scary. Yes, ma'am. Naruto wouldn't realize it until he returned, but Yoshino Nara the woman who would one day give birth to Shikamaru had just flirted with him. Yakami. Yasha. The Waki crowed, thrusting a fist into the air as they strode out of the gates and into the wide open world. This is it. My big debut. Look out world, here I come. Aka. Kashina snapped, tapping the brunette on the head. Save the exuberance for later. Naruto deadpanned, the expression oddly offset by Biki's quiet sigh. Some things never changed. They delayed long enough, departing at sunset rather than an afternoon, as their mandate dictated. But, he felt the rewards were worth it. For once, he now knew that his team were Trank Genin rather mid to low Chunin but their skillsets possessed some semblance of teamwork, and could actually manage to work together when the need arose. It wasn't idle, but the group, that set out from those gates, was a sore sight better than the untested Genin he'd first been saddled with. Besides, for what he had planned, leaving in the evening is ideal. Now, the land of rain is a dangerous place. He began, garnering their attention with a glance. I wouldn't lie to you, many of the shinobi there are cold-blooded killers. They wouldn't hesitate to end you if you give them the slightest opportunity. Thankfully, that's why I'm around. If we're able to meet up with Jiraiya and his group we should be able to manage against Hanzu. The three of you will provide provisional support as needed but do not, and I repeat do not, engage Hanzo under any circumstance. He will waste you. Understand. Have you ever been there, Sensei? No I haven't, but if the third put you three under me, he must have some idea of what he's doing hopefully. Wait, so we have to walk all the way there? Nawaki whined. They said anything about walking. Naruto replied, nipping the edge of his thumb and bringing it down upon the road. Kuchi snow jutsu. The dragons that arose out of the flames were smaller than Bahamut, but only marginally so. This first was a great green giant, his scales glinted brightly upon his slim form in the setting sun. Golden eyes surveying the four of them with eyed curiosity, instead of the dispassionate hunger with which the Prince of Dragons had regarded them before. But unlike the great black behemoth this particular dragon inclined its head the moment it laid eyes upon Naruto, snout touching a portion of the road with a muffled snort. When it spoke, Kashina was startled to realize that it wasn't an it at all, it was a she. The second a white lizard, was slimmer in appearance, his glacial wings all but dripping with condensation, its body more skeletal in comparison to its larger occasion. You called, Naruto Dono. Yo. Naruto grinned, patting her once on the head. Mind giving us a ride, Shiro-kun, Midori-chan. I would be honored to carry you and your clutch upon my back into battle. HRMPH, the second huffed. I suppose I can do as such. Clutch. Nawaki tilted his head, confused as the Chiha ushered Kashino onto his back. What's that? Ah, it's the way dragons refer to their family. Ibiki piped up before the latter could answer. What? Everything knows that. Behind him, Kashina flushed. Family Ape. Those words ended in a startled squeak as Midori's wings beat the air and roared upwards, soaring into the air with a gracefulness, the lighter bulk. She cried out and held tight to Naruto, wrapping her arms as well as the rest of her firmly against him, eliting a flush from Ichiha and Uzumaki both. He could feel a certain something pressing into his back, that he did not want to think about right now, time for a distraction. One he had only to look down to achieve. Look. Kashina complied. What she saw there took her breath away. It was marvelous. The ground was simply gone, all that lay below them was miles of cloudy sky, the stars stretching for miles overhead. Serenity itself. There were no words that could possibly describe this moment for her, because her heart was utterly taken in this moment. It wasn't just a childhood crush, she realized. She was falling in love with him. Assuming she hadn't already. Everything he'd done everything he said only drew her in despite her best efforts to resist his charms. She couldn't help it. 
He'd been so kind to her, from the moment they'd first met a month before, to now, and he didn't push her away like so many others. There was a gentleness in those charcoal eyes that made her feel safe. Warm. A slight flush rose to her cheeks. Naruto. Hmm. Ichiha sputtered as she edged up against him, and lacking the courage to risk anything more with Milwaukee and Ibiki so close, delivered a swift pack to the back of his neck. The effect was as immediate as it was quite pleasant. Naruto nearly jumped up into the air, his cheeks coloring in surprise as he twisted to face her. Kashina. He admonished slightly. Gotcha. The young Uzumaki darted forwards in a rare moment of boldness and wriggled into his lap. Naruto froze, his body turning to stone beneath her. Perhaps he knew what was about to happen. Perhaps not because in the next instant, before he could even form a coherent thought, Kashina's mouth caged his in a chaste lip locking. It was a fleeting kiss all things considered, little more than a brushing of the lips, but she'd done it. Her first kiss. She knew it was incredibly stupid of her to even dare such a thing now that he was her sensei, but it wasn't fair. She'd liked him long before Sir Toby had assigned her to him. In hindsight, that made his reaction all the more sweet. Are you what the heck, Datuboyo? I'm not sorry, Date Ebene. She stuck out her tongue with a giggle, worming around him, and burying her head into his back, when he tried to reach around and grab her. Eventually, he just gave up on it. You're not angry, are you? She asked at last, the words muffled into the fabric of his jacket. With me? No? His voice was oddly thick, rough even. I could never be angry with you. She could see that his knuckles were white, knotted together around Midori's scales. So, how do you feel? About? What do you think? I'm not sure how to feel. Kashina balked but then she caught the corner of his mouth curling upward. He was smiling. Teasing her. Alright, she packed him on the neck again. Naruto hissed. Stop that. Not until you look at me. His lips closed on hers hungrily when Hedy turned around, nearly knocking her clear out of the saddle, one hand cradling her hips, the other locking her face firmly in place. The kisses were hot and frantic and angry, and it took her breath away. It was over all too soon, his body jerking away from hers with a suddenness that left her mind spinning. Satisfied. Satisfied. How could she be satisfied after a scorching kiss like that? So just to reiterate, you don't hate me, right? She couldn't bear the thought of it. That much is clear. A soft sigh greeted her affections, but he made no move to pull away from her. A small part of her wished she could just stay like this forever, the two of them up here. Nawaki and Ibiki little more than a distant memory on their own mount. Had she paid better attention, she might have noticed him touching a hand to his lips, almost in disbelief. Wonderment. If I kiss you again, what you do? Still she daren't raise her head. Things. He relented at last, his dark gaze finally meeting her violet orbs again. Many, many things. Some of which would involve screwing your brains out. What? Despite that being the answer she wanted to hear, her face still colored at the way he'd sighed it. Sensei. You wanted honesty, didn't you? He fell silent after that, and it was clear that they would discuss it no more this evening. How long can she stay like this? She wondered aloud, changing the subject. Wah. Naruto blinked, jerking his hand away from his mouth, shame faced. Um, a few hours, at least. Wow, that's awesome. Kashina wriggled free to stroke the scales of their mount. You're the best, Midori chan. Naruto blanched, both at the suffix knowing a dragon's pride and Kashina's nonchalant stroking of their airborne friend. Dragon scales could be quite sensitive. I wouldn't. Yes, that feels quite nice actually. Lower, if you please. Ah. Kashina grinned a megawatt smile, beaming as she stroked the summoned scales. She likes me. Indeed, a pleasured purse snaked out of Midori's closed mouth, her tail thrashing pleasantly as pleasant as a such a beast could hope to be her wings stretching time with the girl's firm scratching. You have a most woeful student, Naruto Dono. Midori rumbled in soft amusement. I can see why she intrigued Bahamid-sama. Ha. Kashina gasped. You mean I impressed that big brute? Indeed, little one. That settled it. She had to sign the dragon contract. Naruto could only pray that Ame wasn't as bad as he feared. It was worse. The Land of Rain was a warzen. Not only had they not been able to make contact with Tsunade and the others, but they didn't even know where the trio was, where they had gone, or if they were even alive. Rumors abound that they had fought with Hanzo of the Salamander and perished, others said that they had conquered him, and claimed Ame for the leaf. Still others claimed that the Salamander had defeated them, bestowing upon the trio the title of Sanin for their courageous efforts. Naruto was inclined to believe the third, but none of that mattered now. Midori had been forced to land a ways back, thanks to the conflict taking her into battle with so many jutsu flying, simply wasn't an option. So here they were, in a land that seemed hellbent upon killing them. Bodies lay sprawled for miles on end, a handful of the Mame Shinobi, but others bearing the battered Hishiate of the leaf. Ibiki remained unfazed, by comparison the Waki looked sick to his stomach. My sister. We'll be fine. Naruto soothed, patting the boy's back. She's too stubborn to die in a place like this. I hope. Kashina gagged, quietly retching at the sight of so much death. Easy now, he soothed her, glancing at the water's edge. We're in enemy territory. But. 
look out. That was all he heard before the fireball hit. Sensei. Naruto's body had been blackened beyond recognition, not from the flames, but rather his technique. He'd hardened every inch of his body with the earth release in the nick of time, his form coated in a black veneer of hardened soil even as they looked on it crumbled, revealing unharmed flesh beneath. Doten. Domu. The same could not be said of the hundred of Ame Nine that rose from the waters to meet him. He couldn't be bothered to remember their faces, their name was Legion for they were many. Too many to count. Greetings, Ichiha Naruto. One of them chuckled. We have been chosen by Hanzo Sama to entertain you this evening. Purred another. If you would kindly die for us. Okay, cliche much, but. Naruto took one look at their numbers and hissed. This was too many for a simple patrol. They'd been waiting for him. An ambush, then. But how? How had they known he was coming unless? Run. He shouted, realizing what was about to happen. You can't handle this many. But. Run. Naruto daren't look to see if they obeyed his command or not, he was too busy fighting for his life. The first step within range of his Sharingan found himself on the receiving end of a war fan to the face, and by then he'd no more time for thought. All the word was a blur of kunai and shuriken in fist and feet, he was at the center of the storm all, the eye of the hurricane. Sharingan tracked in impossible directions, he swung aside as kunai bearing an explosive note whistle past peeling it off, and slapping it onto the nearest shinobi, a swift shove thrusting the living bomb into his fellows with a deafening bang, sending his assailants flying. In that instant, a bloody palm slammed against the ground. Kuchi Snow Jutsu. Bahamut roared out of the subsequent smoke with a defining snarl, his tail sweeping aside scores of enemy shinobi. One more the Prince of Dragons towered over the battlefield, striking fear into all he faced. An irate snarl burst forth from his throat, followed by a geyser of flame as he realized where he had been summoned. Again. I've got a small army for you this time. Naruto snapped back, ducking as a wall of wind threatened to tear his head from its shoulders. Shut up and be satisfied already. I pray that they are worthy. That was all the time he needed for the Mingekyo to activate. What followed was nothing short of a single-sided slaughter. Susumu's sinister swords and Bahamut's wrath making swift work of those who dared to come near them. Yet still they came, throwing their lives away. Yutsu were thrown left and right, blows exchanged, yet none came within arm's length of him. What was the point of this? Were they content to die without reaching him? He could just stand here, arms folded, and literally let the Susanu and his enemies, all without breaking, so much as a sweat. So why? Why were they attacking him so blindly? What the hell's going on here? What's going on? Kashina didn't understand what was happening. Was she dead? Was she dying? She didn't understand. One moment they were scrambling to get as far away from Naruto's battle as possible. The next, something else happened. These shinobi were far beyond them, he'd said. Get away, he'd said. So they had, retreating to an acceptable distance from the fray, whilst their sensei made short work of the army raid against him. This shouldn't have happened. They'd been on their guard. They'd been prepared, ready for an possibility of an ambush, or even an attack. Damn it, they'd been ready. The Wucky's scream was their only warning. Watch it. Before she knew what was happening the ground was just gone. Earth rose all around them, swallowing them up before they could shout, spitting them out somewhere else. The sounds of Naruto's battle were but a distant thing, a backdrop to the horror unfolding before her very eyes. Something massive reared its head, a large snout poking out of the rainy soil. Then a body, and a tail, its oily skin sliding through them looked like an eel. But this was no eel. This was 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 a salamander. Well, well, well. A muffled voice murmured from atop the beast's head. Kano has sending teenagers to kill me now. How disappointing. Her heart leapt into her throat when she saw that face. That mask. Oh no. No 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 no. This wasn't supposed to happen. Naruto had told them under no circumstance would they to ever face this man that they needed to run if he ever cornered them. Ibiki went down first, clutching at his bloody throat before he could even utter so much as a word. An elbow slid effortlessly into Nawaki's gut, even as he called upon the Mokuten his bloodline writhing uselessly at his feet as his control was severed, his body unconscious before he even hit the floor. That left her. Kashina. Hanzo turned toward her with a terrifying slowness, his Kusarigama still dripping blood. She couldn't fight him a child had a better chance of fighting him. Anyone but her. Let me out. The fox rumbled. I can destroy this fool and you know it. Kashina gulped, crawling backwards like a drunken crab in search of water. But there was no escape, and she didn't know any earth techniques that would allow her to sink into the terrain. Let me out. Sorry, he rumbled. But I wouldn't be sparing you. Someone wants you dead. Nothing personal. This is how the world works. In that instant, crippled with fear as she was, she had two options. Give in to the fear, and lose her life, or give in to the beast inside her and live. Naruto had made her promise to never, ever rely upon the Kyuubi's power. But it was either that or die. Let me out. Kashina gave in. God damn it. Crimson chakra flooded her veins as the Biju cloak formed, three tails of pure hate sprouting from her back in an instant as she seated restraint. 
Every fiber of her being stood on end, her canines gnashing together in silent agony, as she struggled to keep the fourth tail from forming. Any further and she'd lose control completely. Even now, a small part of herself gloried in the release, the beast that the world feared so. Power. What glorious power. It was intoxicating this chakra, she didn't know why she'd ever been afraid stop. Stop 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 stop. You stupid fox. She hissed at it, clawing at the ground with her nails. Stop messing with my head. I'm not giving in to you. And why not? The demon rumbled, bemused. Naruto was quite compliant, when his life was in danger. What? Naruto's not a Jinchuriki. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, little girl. He was mine once upon a time, before this mess unfolded. Kashina yowled. Lying. You're lying. Am I now? Why don't you ask him? But first. Ho? Hanzo blinked, intrigued, utterly unaware of the conflict taking place within. So you are a Jinchuriki. Interesting. Are you going to lose yourself, I wonder if. His words proved the weight to sever their argument, ending now in a muffled grunt as Kashina's fist crunched against his jaw, her clenched knuckles barreling into his face with enough force to create a hairline crack in his rebreather. Despite all her anger she felt a trickle of pride. Ha. Then it or not, she'd actually managed to hurt him. She why was she falling? What had happened to her chakra? Why was everything so dark? Well what was going on? I'll give you credit for hitting me, Hanzo's voice murmured overhead, his side once more filling her vision. But I know a thing or two about Biju and suppressing their chakra. Pity, though. You made me lose my last one. Kashina. Sensei. Get the hell away from her. The last thing she saw was a blur of black. Get the hell away from her. Oh? Hanzu paused, his Kusarigama coming just short of pricking Kashina's throat, stopped by a hand wrapped around his wrist. Ichiha Naruto, I presume. You're late. I was expecting more of a challenge from your students. Naruto bristled as he beheld them lying there on the ground, their bodies beaten and broken. No. A quiet hiss of breath escaped his throat as the deadly edge drew blood. Not like this. They couldn't be they just couldn't. If they were dead. No 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 no. Are you going to stand there all day, or are you going to attack me? Hanzo challenge. They won't live much longer if they don't receive medical attention. Oh shit. Don't lose it, partner. Ah dump. Ah, Christ. There he goes. That did it. He thought he had snapped before when he'd nearly failed to stop Kashina's kidnapping. He thought himself insane with anger, when witnessed Sanade's death in wind country. But this, this, redefined anger. There was no red haze this time no sensational of falling in the black, losing himself into the darkness. It was as simple as a flicking a switch. One moment he stood there, soaked in the blood of a small army the fools who dared to stall him now slain the next his mind simply ceased to be. He took in the prone, broken forms of his students of Kashina, and the Mingekyo flared to life in his eyes. There, standing in the rain, he lost himself. Naruto screamed. Susanoo roared into existence around him, black bone and cold chakra writhing its angry tendrils in either direction. Larger it grew, assuming human shape and form, then larger still, its many arms spreading outwards like an ancient Asur, six limbs, six swords slashing at the ground in a thrashing frenzy. So great was his fury that the leader of the rain was actually forced to leap backward, seeking shelter atop the head of his mighty salamander, lest he be torn apart by the many blades. One thought stood at the forefront of his mind as he gazed upon the hellish creature that had engulfed the Black Death. What kind of Sharingan is that? Golden eyes glared out at Hanzo, a rictus of angry teeth parting in ghastly grimace as its master exhaled. Five words were spoken then a series of sinister syllables that not only chilled Hanzo of the salamander to the bone, but left him quivering in very real fear for perhaps the first time in his career. I will fucking murder you. Ho? Oh, big words for an upstart. The salamander crooked his fingers into a claw, beckoning anxiously. But I wonder, can you make it? Oka Makaku. Naruto's shout emptied itself into the ground in a furious roar of fire, a sinister sway the flame to accompany his bold statement. The very same technique that had nearly made a corpse out of Yugaku, only earned the briefest of blinks from Hanzu. That flame. His hands flicked into the appropriate seals, to meet him head on, inwardly balking at the sheer mass of fire roaring forwards across the ground. Sutin, Sujinhaki. Ibus opened its mouth, to aid its master and spat expelling a jet of water to battle back the enveloping blaze. Two lady realized his mistake, the inferno had been little more than a distraction for his clones to get the brats to safety. An errant wind jutsu blew away the mist before Hanzo could hope to make use of it, and hell was revealed. Those damn eyes conveyed, but two words unto his frightened mind. Black death. Hanzo reared back, fearing the worst as Naruto started forwards at him. That was when, instead of growing larger as was often its wound, the massive creature of black chakra, and gone had the opposite effect. Conforming itself to his every feature, forming a suit of ethereal armor over the already deadly Ichiha. But Ichiha or not, he was a mere man, and no man could hope to stand against Ibuse's poison once exhaled. Of that much he was certain. No man, Ichiha or otherwise, could defeat him. None. Raiden. John. 
Naruto opened his mouth and Ibu vanished in a torrent of light. It all happened so fast. One moment, Hanzo was standing astride his might mount. The next, Ibus was gone, disintegrating out from under him as the terrible radiance slammed into the mighty beast. The poor salamander hadn't even had a chance to dispel itself it was well and truly dead, before it knew what had happened. Hanzo was lucky enough to leap away with his skin intact, his shoulder cloak smoldering away from his back as he flicked through the signs to counter. Futen, Tatapa. His Winjutsu never found its target. Because Naruto and his blast were already alone gone, the angry gale scouring, yet another scar into the land of rain. The only warning Hanzu had, was the crackle of the Ichiha's emergence, a flicker of black light horation snarling into existence behind him. Oh dear. What was that black flash just now? What? With a sudden whisper, Naruto appeared behind Hanzo, his power swollen limbs engulfed in the black light of a Matarasu. He was extremely close to the leader of rain, a powerful leg bent back and ready to snap forward at his skull. Hanzo saw him and reached around with his Kusurigama, but he already knew he wasn't going to be fast enough. Any hope of him outmaneuvering the Black Death was non-existent the moment that man had decided to unleash his true might upon the world. Even so, Hanzo deserves some credit for trying. Doten. Naruto spun around quickly, slamming his heel into Hanzo's body. With a surprise grunt, the pale-skinned shinobi went flying down the battlefield, a trail of dark blood following his broken body through the falling rain and into the muddy ground of the plains. The snow caught in his throat, and he found that his legs refused to move, his body powerless as his limp form slammed against the asphalt once gravity took hold of him, his skin skidding across the earth as the momentum continued to drag him over the short terrain. At last fate took mercy on him, his feet were suddenly freed from the ground, as his back skidded into the rain-soaked soil a modicum of control, returning to his body. He'd used the earth spear technique to harden his body at the last instant it was the only thing that had saved his life. Even then, the Chiha's roundhouse kick had fractured at least three ribs. Breathing hurt. It took a monumental effort just to stand. The stand Hanzo did, pulling himself woodenly to his feet despite the pain screaming in his side. He was the man who had named the sand in only hours before, a simple kick would not be enough to end him. Not bad, Ichiha. He murmured around his rib breather. You live up to your name. But you'll need more than cheap parlor tricks to beat me. The only responses he earned from the Ichiha was an inarticulate snarl of anger and loathing. Oh. Apparently the man cared more for his students than he thought. He'd have to ask that man about it. After he killed the Black Death of course. One couldn't rush such things, and he was being paid a handsome sum of money, to ensure that Kano has upstarting shinobi met an untimely end. It was nothing personal of course, Omogakure needed the money to function. He spared those other three purely on a whim, curious to see how the man would react. Thus far, he was not disappointed. Are you going to stand there all day, or are you going to attack me? Naruto raised his hand, made a clenching motion with the first hand. Well, a lot of things happened at once. The first realization Hanzo had that something was terribly, horribly wrong was when he was pulled, an invisible force violently yanking him forward off the ground, hauling back into the fray against his will. The next, was that his right arm was suddenly gone, torn free from its socket by an impossibly long black blade, the latter extending and contracting in response to the Ichiha's chakra. The third was that he was flying past him, his remaining arm snapping like a matchstick, as said Ichiha clobbered him into the ground. This close, Hanzo could clearly see the man's face, the angry purple yes, purple eyes that leered down at him. The fifth and final thing the one that truly sealed Hanzo's fate was the boy's eyes had changed yet again, his malevolent Mingeku Sharingan now more akin to an eerie rippling violet, one that every S-rank shinobi worth their salt knew of and feared. A sight that put the fear of the six path sage into Hanzo right fierce, and made him quiver like a green genin. Rinnegan. Rumors of the legendary Jujutsu had abounded since the dawn of the Shinobi Age, legends of the Rakuto Senin's eyes existing somewhere in the world. And now they were here. Engaging him, was the last thing Hanzo wanted now what he needed, was to get the hell away from this madman, that was attacking him. He was outmatched in every conceivable way, in the time it took him to think of a strategy, the Black Ed only brutalized him even further still, extending a hand until his palm laid flat upon the prone man's back. Two words were uttered, a single series of syllables that spelled doom for the leader of Amagakure. Shinner. Tensei. Ground. Earth and Hanzu became intimate in impossible ways, earth bursting before his form. Down he plunged, his body shooting through the soil like a human splinter, only to emerge once more, as the almighty push cleared a path through the horrible dent in the earth. The path by which the poor man continued to suffer. Yelling incoherently, the enraged Ichiha dragged Hanzo's face down onto his rising knee, before grabbing him two-handed by the arm, and tossing him away overhead. The man's mind was left whirling, as was his field of vision, all the world was a rain-soaked blur, one he could no longer make sense of. What is happening? Naruto was suddenly there to greet him again, his boots slamming down on the man's chest with enough force to put an atom bomb to shame. Not that the latter had been invented, yet, but someday, the world would look back and tremble when they saw the size of the crater that single stomp had created. 
His heel pressed down against Hanzo's chest, pinning him to the ground, denying him any chances of escape. No words were spoken, no finally taunts uttered. He simply held Hanzu down with one foot, the man's chest caving underfoot. A single unspoken command was given. Susanu. Naruto towered over him, that ghoulish skeleton flickered to life around him once more. It was larger now, larger than anything he had ever seen, its master ascending with, trapped within a lone jewel atop his head. And it was still growing, its ever-expanding foot all but grinding the tearing into a pulp beneath its heel. And still the man did not die. Hanzo opened his mouth to plead for his life, too late, he realized there would be no mercy. Higher the black Susanoo towered then higher still, its former piercing the weeping clouds themselves. It was massive, larger than a mountain, greater even, than a biju. It drew its blade in one fluid motion, and it was then, that he knew his death had come. There would be no split-second intervention from a third part to save him, no moment of respite from his aggressor. Oddly enough, he didn't feel fear. It had been a good fight, all things considered. His employer would doubtlessly be furious, to learn that Kanoha's black death would only continue to grow from this encounter. It was a good fight. Closing his eyes, Hanzu of the Salamander consented himself to death's frigid embrace. His last thought was thus. Black death. Then the black blade descended and he knew no more. Tired. He was so, goddamned, tired. Naruto had never been more exhausted in his life. Awakening the Rinnegan was one thing, but calling upon the perfect Susanoo his body was taxed to his very limits. He barely had enough strength to create a trio of shadow clones to carry his students' slumbering forms to safety. Even less, to check over them, tend their injuries, make certain, they would survive. Never again, he avowed. Never again would he allow them to face such danger alone. They would learn from this experience, would live to see another day, another sunrise. Hanzo, would not. Almost as an afterthought, Naruto approached the man's corpse. Hanzu's body was barely recognizable thanks to the Susanoo's pulverizing power, but enough of him remained that his scrawls were lavishly intact in any case. He plucked the salamander contract from the shinobi's broken body, stowing in on his personage. It never hurt to pick your enemies clean. Speaking of which it need proof of the man's death. Sword still in hand, he considering the man, appraising him. Then he slashed down, severing his head at the neck, decapitating him. Storing in. You killed him. He didn't even deign to turn, he sensed them on the fringes of the battle, but he'd been too consumed by bloodlust to notice. This close it was impossible not to recognize their chakra, what little they had as untrained children yet his heart still skipped a beat nevertheless as he drew near. It was them. He'd been so focused on finishing Hanzo with all of his power, that he hadn't even paused to consider the possibility that his perfect Susanoo, massive as it was, could attract unwanted attention. Yeah, I killed him. He spoke, rising from his crouch. What of it? Nothing. The girl's voice stammered out, stuttering in her fear. It's just, that thing was huge. It was. Naruto conceded, peering at the break he'd made in the clouds. This country needed something big to put, an end to her tears. Indeed, for the first time in nearly a century, it was no longer raining. The sky was blue and clear overhead, the sun poking its head fearfully between the break almost for fear of being punished. Beautiful, huh? Naruto chuckled. You say that like you mean it. Another voice of boys challenged his words. I do. So, are those your students? Naruto's gaze drifted to Kashina, Ibiki, and Iwaki. Yes. He supplied quietly, still refusing to look at them. They'll be just fine. They're strong. For a long moment nothing was said. Finally, the girl spoke again. Who are you, mister? The name's Ichiha Naruto, he felt nearly a thousand years old as he turned and laid eyes upon Nagato, Yuhiko, and Konin when he saw their young faces. They were just as he'd imagined they would be. Those are some mighty fine eyes you got there, kid. Just like mine. To his credit, the Redeed actually held up under his stare for a moment before his courage faltered, and he ducked behind his companion the latter eyeing him up and with an expression eerily akin to awe or perhaps fear. But these three had nothing to fear. Not from him. Nagato. Yuhiko. Konin. They were here. Naruto couldn't help it, he laughed, it was a soft throaty sound. This changed everything. The strength left his legs then, he played it off by crouching down before them. The kids have names. He asked, benignly, despite already knowing. They supplied them. No parents, huh? Even hearing their tale for a second time, he still felt sorry for them. If it makes you feel any better, I never knew my folks either. But you know ninjutsu. Yuhiko pointed out. Yeah, because I worked my ass off to learn it, Dr. Can you teach us? Boy now, that's a bit of a tall order there. Why do you want to learn ninjutsu? The boy immediately colored, but his bluster was swift to return. I wanted to make this land stop crying. That's already been done. Naruto pointed out. Then, because I don't want to lose anyone else. Naruto grinned. Good answer, kid. There was a silence after that, the three orphans unsure of what to say to this strange man. Be hungry. He dug a hand into pouch, retrieving the rations he'd been saving for this very occasion. I've got these whoa. 
They were all but snatched out of his hands by Yuhiko and Conan, with Nagato only slightly more reluctant to take his offered share of the food. Ha, hey, I'll take that as yes. Why are your eyes like Nagato's? Conan quested as she ate, peering at him smart girl, leave it to her to put two and two together. They're the same, but you're not an Izumaki, are you? No, but she is. Naruto pointed toward Kashina's slumbering form. Maybe she's your long lost cousin or something. Nagato jerked as though he'd been hit by a lightning bolt. This young woman was related to him by blood. He flushed at the thought. Conan wasn't so easily satisfied. You didn't answer my question. Well, he and I are the same in a way. Naruto smiled softly. These eyes help me protect those precious to me. Isn't that right, Nagato? You have someone you want to protect, don't you? The boy nodded quietly, his eyes straying towards his friends once more. Ah, it really warmed the heart. So, are you going to teach us or not? Persistent kid, this Yuhiko. Now now, all in good time. Naruto soothed as they finished off his rations. I plan on heading back once these three have recovered, and I've found my allies. Their faces fell. Hey. I wasn't finished. He barked out, causing them to start. She. So, kids. Still smiling, he extended a hand to the three orphans. How would you like to become Shinobi? The words were barely out of his mouth before they shouted him down. Yes. Preview. Minato. Curiosity momentarily overtook his better judgment. He detached himself from the wall and spoke. Hey. At the sight of him the blonde seemed to fold in on himself. Those blue eyes became hard, the normally soft and smiling face almost distant in comparison. In a couple of years this man would be the fourth Hokage. But right here, right now, he was merely a young man, only a few years younger than him. And he was being an ass. Now, Naruto had always respected his father, although he'd never really known him. Never had he seen him on a bad day, or at his worst. Not as he was now. Here, in this moment, the young Nemikaze did not remind him of his father. At all. Ichiha-san. There was a coldness to his tone, it worried Naruto. What are you doing out this late? Don't you have enough pet projects? The teenager grumbled. You've already got Kashina under your thumb, then you brought those orphans back from Ame, now you've suddenly taken an interest in me. Well now, no need to get so angry. He raised his hands, placating the younger boy. I was just curious. You were trying to steal my jutsu, you mean. By now, I know for a fact that you've got nothing worth stealing. Naruto scowled, drawing a growl from the young man. Yet. Yeah. But given some time. Hello? The boy muttered something unintelligible. Naruto frowned. Say again? I said. Oof. Air rushed out of him in a surprise lunge, his father's fist sheathing itself in his stomach. He'd never seen it coming. One moment the boy was standing across from him the next he body flickered, and an arm was quite painfully sheathed up to the elbow in his gut. Stay away from Kashina. Naruto felt the hackles on the back of his neck begin to rise. The leash he kept on his self-control, already frayed, chose that instant to snap. The sudden realization that he was sick of being talked to like this brought a wave of rage to his mind, with the ferocity of a great and dark tempest. Sick. Of. His. Shit. Boy. Minato froze as a hand of black chakra, and bone materialized from nowhere, its bleak fingers lashing out to crunch against his ribsage. Naruto slammed the teenager up against the wall with such force that he actually felt the boy's collarbone crack. For the first time, an expression of very real fear cracked across the blonde's visage at the sight of those swirling tomo, bright and red and so very angry. Just like that their positions were reversed, the attacker had become the attacked. So you wanna play, ha, huh? he rumbled. Just like that, Minato was free, the ghostly appendage vanishing into thin air. Alright, Minato. Let's play. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.